So Andy, when I think of blockchain, the first thing that comes to mind really is cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin of course, a bit annoyed that in the past few years ago. <laughs> so yeah, what, what can you tell me about this? Well I think everyone thinks of Bitcoin, don't they, when you say yeah, blockchain. Bitcoin was probably the first and most famous use of blockchain technology. You know, blockchain technology is a series of ledgers where you know everyone in the ledger has to approve a transaction uh, before it uh, before it registers. So yeah, Bitcoin is one example. And yes, I wish uh, I'd invested six or seven years uh, ago too. Uh, but you know, it does have wider applications. It's being used at the moment for tracking mangoes and blood diamonds in the supply chain. You know, people are talking about giving bank accounts uh, to people so they can uh, exchange uh, assets between each other without the use of a bank. There's two billion people in the world who don't have a bank account. So yeah. you know, there's loads of problems to solve yeah. in the blockchain. So maybe just um, before, we, before we continue, can you just quickly explain to us what blockchain is or what blockchain technology is? Yeah, uh, blockchain technology is really you know a, a whole load of ledgers, a series of, uh, of blocks um, where there isn't a central intermediary that needs to approve a transaction. All the nodes in the network need to approve a transaction before it can be completed through. Um, so there are some features. One is, but it's um, then it's immutable. You know that that tra everyone has a copy of that transaction. So uh, there's no disputes about whether something happened or. not. So that's an important uh, aspect of it. Yeah. It's decentralized, you know, so it doesn't rely on a centralized server. And we know all about the hacks recently. I can talk about British Airways, PageUp in HR. Uh, and there's been other ones too. So, it, you know, it helps in that respect too. So, Andy, when we look at the world of work, HR, what would you say are the main issues at the moment? Well, I think we're, we're used to doing things a certain way. So, you know, applying for jobs on a MS Word CV, uh, and apparently, you know, 50% of these CVs or resumes have little white lies on them. Obviously not yours or mine, but Definitely. apparently people do that. Now, CVs aren't the be-all and end-all of recruiting. They're just one aspect of it. But it just shows uh, the verification of data and the core data we've got. The other thing is uh, centralized data models. So we all use LinkedIn. Well, 600 million people use LinkedIn. So we, we update our profiles and uh, effectively that, we do that for free. But that data is then sold on to recruiters so you can find good people in organizations. We're cool with that, like well with uh, other uses of software that we, we enjoy using. They you know they use it, use the data to sell products to us. But in the HR space, that has meant that certain people own all the, all the data. And we've set up a situation where you know recruiters are, are spamming very talented in-demand individuals who are just signing off. It's very hard to find people. I think we need to completely rebuild the whole work infrastructure from scratch. And there's a whole lot of problems around bias, discrimination, uh, and even just accessing, uh, getting the visibility of all the work out there. And if you're a worker, graphic designer, coder, a writer, it's very hard to see where all the available work is. Same with if you're an employer, to find verified, trustworthy workers. So we need to fix the matching process, I would say. Um, and I think we need to relook at that, and blockchain can play a part, I think. Can you give us a few examples of how blockchain could you know, be used by HR or in HR to, yeah. to help solve some of these problems? Yeah, I think one use that I particularly like is the old-fashioned CV on MS Word. Actually, we need a digital version of that that is verifiable. I think the future of CVs will be, you know, we'll have our work references, certifications, work history, references from colleagues, psychometric tests, whatever, it will control in a, in a wallet that's encrypted that only we have access to. And then we can share that data with uh, parties that we trust. And that could be a potential employer, a recruiter, or something like that. The difference is we own it. And we decide who looks at it and whether we want to monetize it ourselves. That's really, really powerful. And I think if we get our heads around that, that could change the whole recruitment marketplace. Um, one of the, well, if we get to that point, then we can have more efficient work matching platforms, as I call them. And that doesn't have to be for old fashioned jobs, contracts, it could be for hourly advice. You know, there's companies in the startup space who, where you can actually uh, get paid uh, in crypto or fiat currencies for an hour of your advice uh, through, through matching and verification. 
Yeah. So I think it's got great potential. The platform enables peer-to-peer -peer transactions so you can find a job. So what that means is transaction costs go down. Uh, I don't know what the fees are off the top of my head, but roughly 20% down to below 5%, where it's just peer-to-peer. -peer. So there's some great uh, advantages for employers, for workers in this, uh, in this actual model. And another advantage of that is around giving benefits to the freelancers in the gig economy. And maybe they could own or have a share in these, uh, in these platforms. So it's a very different model we're talking about. And I'm seeing these being built uh, today. I believe another use case is about payroll and blockchain, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, think of all the workers out there, not everybody gets paid on the fourth Friday of every month, like in the UK, or every two weeks in the US. And if anyone's worked as, uh, in, in uh, their own company, self-employed, freelancers, you know, it can take weeks and weeks to, to actually get paid. Um, so one thing that blockchain can do with verification, checking, and validation, is just make that, uh, make that process more streamlined, uh, with more trust in it. So uh, there are, there's a, a case of a couple of companies. One is Chrono Bank in Australia are paying construction workers basically the day that day after they clock out. You know they, they actually have money in their wallet that they can spend uh, with fiat currencies, Aussie dollars in the supermarket that evening. So it's good for the employer because they can validate that that person on site is uh, should be there from that perspective, and the worker themselves know they'll get paid at the end of the day. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a win-win. Obviously, we'd have to uh, reconstruct a lot of our pay accounts payable, finance and payroll processes. But, you know, I see this as a decades-long play out. Yeah. Yeah. And talking about play out, how do you think that these developments that we currently see regarding yeah. blockchain and HR, how do yeah. you think they will play out? What you know, will the uh, process be, you know? Yeah, I mean, here we're looking at a, a, my crystal ball. It's yes. hard to say, but I did a research report. Um, Don Tapscott, you might have heard of him, uh, has been talking about the digital economy and wrote Blockchain Revolution. Asked me to do a research report on the opportunities of blockchain and HR. And I described the use cases around uh, more trust in CVs, hiring, work matching platform. And Don said, yeah, I get that, but what happens next? What happens to the firm where we can easily source project teams and workers from a liquid workforce. We, can, we have the visibility of that, we can, we can pay those workers more quickly, we've got some AI to work out what makes great teams. What happens to all those people inside organizations who manage all that searching and contracting? I think the view is that the firm becomes smaller, the firms become smaller, uh, tapping into this liquid workforce. So alongside that, we have to ask questions of society. How do we provide financial security and welfare to these groups of disparate workers earning pieces of work, if you like? Um, so that's a question that we need to, as a society, in different regions, come up with some solutions. Yes. I think it's perfectly doable, but it's, uh, it will take many, many years. Yes. And um, how can we get involved? Oh, great question. I think for HR, payroll, recruitment people, or people who are just generally interested, yeah. there's a few ways. One is, I think, is the ch biggest change is the change in mindset. Yeah, it's probably to read up a little bit about new business models created by blockchain. There's no need to study uh, encryption and the mathematics um, around blockchain, actually. Think about the business models where we could do without intermediaries, or there's loads of checking and validating required. You know, in your business, there will be loads of processes like that. That's one thing. You can actually earn a little bit of crypto to get um, to understand about having a wallet and having encryption keys and hash keys. You can do that with very low amounts. I'm not giving you investment advice here, but you could, you could earn .com, earn a, a couple of quid, a couple of dollars worth of crypto, yeah. and hold that in a wallet to get a feel about to how get a feel for yeah. it. And I'm not saying whether those uh, companies or, or tokens will do well or not, it doesn't matter. You get the opportunity just to move the tokens around, okay? Yes. So that's one way. There's industry groupings coming up. There's retail, industry, blockchain consortiums. I know of a construction blockchain consortium in the UK, uh, looking at all the opportunities there. Um, read my medium publication, Blockchain and the Distributed Workforce, um, which is a hub of uh, people writing about this subject. Um, there's a couple of ideas. Yeah, well, well, that's enough to be getting on with. Definitely, that would be a really good start. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you, Neely.